Land, how to relax. your host, Walt Disney. One of the most common topics of today is how to relax, what to do with our leisure time. Down through the ages, one of the most important things man has worked and struggled for is leisure. And with the five-day week and the eight-hour day, man is well on his way to this goal. So he must solve the problem of what to do with all this newfound time how to relax. Here at the studio, we have one of the most relaxed characters you've ever met, Goofy. So I'm gonna turn the show over to him and let him act as your guide on this program to show us the Goofy way to relax. To probe the mystery of this fascinating subject of relaxation, let's take the key to the future. Open the door of the present. Step across the threshold of time and journey back through the dim, dark corridors of the past. Come. Come with me. Back. Back through the days of the horseless carriage and the high-wheeled bicycle. Back to the very beginnings of our young nation. Over the drawbridge and through the age of chivalry. Back past the ancient days of the pharaohs. Back, ever back to prehistoric man's earliest beginnings, the caveman. The caveman had nothing but leisure on his hands. He was truly relaxed. Then one day he made a big mistake. He discovered his thumb. With his thumbs, he found he could pick up a club. The club developed into tools. Man discovered work. <coughs> And that was the end of leisure. He made pyramids and sphinxes. He built acropolises. He built boats and bridges and cities with roads and buildings and houses. Well, one thing led to another until man was doing nothing but work, work, Work. Round the clock he worked. From sun up to sundown. And when he got tired of working, he worked some more. Came the revolution. The industrial revolution. Using brains instead of brawn. Man began a long fight to recapture what he had lost, leisure. He harnessed steam and became its master. He built machines of steel to make his work easier. Step by step, he moved forward. He invented things, huge cranes, stamping machines, and great steel foundries. The six-day week and the 12-hour day became things of the past. Thanks to the miracle of mass production.
Now it would appear that man is right back where he started, with time on his hands and his thumbs unemployed. But no, there's a difference, a big difference. Outwardly, he appears to be relaxed. But inwardly, the machine has mastered man. This anatomical chart shows that underneath it all, he is a creature of tension, strain, and worry. A victim of the frenzied tempo of modern living. Note the grim face. Butterflies in the stomach. Taut nerves, knotted muscles. Anxiety impulses from the brain cause footus flatus, like this, or pedal extremus, like this. But <laughs> unlike the brain, the foot is too smart to try to keep up the frantic pace. It simply lies down and goes to sleep. This is marked by a tingling sensation. This tingling is transmitted through the nervous system's telephone line until it reaches the brain. Hello? Brain? This is what? Slow down. Relax. But relaxing is much easier said than done. Today, man has forgotten how to relax and how to enjoy all the leisure time he has. So let's try to solve this problem of modern man by simple arithmetic. First, there are the evenings, the leisure hours between work and bedtime. In a year, these evening hours equal 87 full days of leisure. Weekends add 104 days each year. And our annual vacation gives us another 14 days of leisure. So not counting sick leaves, holidays, coffee breaks, and <laughs> just plain goofing off, we have a total of 205 days to relax. So let's start with what an average man does with his evenings. When the day's toil is over and the clock nears five, our hero looks forward to an evening of well-earned rest and relaxation. Reluctantly, he wends his way to the time clock. The zero hour approaches. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. <coughs> to keep, wound up too tightly, too nervous to sleep. With tensions and worries and nothing to do but sit in a chair, his brains in a stew. Worn down to a nub, it's a hobby to choose. So get one. Hurry. There's no time to lose. <laughs> and in conclusion, we often find a simple hobby is not only a source of great personal satisfaction, but also proves an ideal method of relaxation for everyone. And now for weekends. Two whole days to relax. Weekends spent at home are one of the favorite periods for relaxation, especially for the avid do-it-yourself fan. Today, do-it-yourselfing has become big business. It's easy to construct your own hi-fi set, your own railroad, build a toll bridge, even a skyscraper. Nothing is beyond the realm of possibility. All you have to do is
fill out the attached coupon, drop it in the nearest mailbox, a short wait for delivery, and you're on your way to fun and relaxation, assembling your favorite put-it-together kit. Of course, these kits come complete with an enclosed book of instructions on how to fly a glider. <laughs> yeah, nothing to it. First, test the prevailing winds by means of the wind sock. Then choose the proper terrain and make sure the takeoff is clear of any obstacles, particularly trees and telephone poles. <laughs> die, die, dum die, die, die. Here goes my glider and I, bye bye. Turn into the wind, test your equipment, and take off. Faster, faster, more speed, more speed. Don't let minor mishaps mar your enthusiasm. Keep trying, for there are many other ways to enjoy your leisure. Today, the family garage has become a machine shop filled with lathes, drills, saws, jigs, augers, in fact, power tools of every description. But all this elaborate equipment isn't really necessary. The resourceful do-it-yourselfer only needs a few simple tools and the urge to tinker. There is only one unbreakable rule for tinkering. Never finish any project you start. This rule applies to painting floors, doing your own wallpapering, decorating, easy remodeling jobs, repairing furniture, fixing leaky pipes, or for the more courageous, fixing the television set. Tinkering not only provides the tinkerer with much needed relaxation, it is also a prime source of revenue for the professional repairman who must necessarily follow the tinkerer. <clears throat> for statistics show us the average handyman about the house creates more havoc and destruction than the combined efforts of termites, tornadoes, flood, fire, and water. But the rabid do-it-yourselfer is not easily discouraged. He is a man of far-ranging dreams, of vaulting ambitions, Sometimes these ambitions lure him into some spectacular home remodeling project like adding a room, a den of his own, designed as a perfect haven to relax. Of course, there are a few minor details to take care of, filing your legal description, title search, easements, deeds, zoning laws, oil and mineral rights, building permits, soil tests, contracts, electrical and plumbing codes. Just be sure these necessary items are taken care of or you might find yourself out on a limb. <laughs> Not me! Oh, oh, oh I've got you! And when at last his dreams have been transformed by wood, metal, and masonry into solid reality, the happy do-it-yourselfer is ready to enjoy the results of his hobby. Where he can enjoy to the utmost the gentle art of loafing. but there's much more to do on weekends than just staying home. Yes, indeed. The leisure hours of Saturdays and Sundays are ideally suited for the weekend sportsmen. These hardy souls go in for the more vigorous type of relaxation, out in the wide open spaces where one is lulled to sleep by the gentle sounds of nature. Ah, yes, there is nothing to equal the joy of sleeping in the great out of doors, arising at the crack of dawn, completely relaxed from head to toe. Hungrily filling our lungs with a pure, thin, rarefied mountain air, so much healthier than the smog and artificial ozone of the crowded city. And then, of course, there's nothing to compare with duck hunting. Ah, 
are the clarion call, so beloved by the enthusiastic Nimrod. This form of recreation is an excellent way of relaxing for everyone, except <clears throat> perhaps for the duck. <laughs> for the more sedate devotees of leisure, there is always horseback riding. Ah, yes, from office seat to saddle for those who prefer their exercise sitting down. Wind in your face, blowing away tension, strain, and worry. And so at a leisurely pace, one has time to contemplate the beauty and tranquility of nature. <laughs> But the weekend athlete doesn't have to travel far afield for his relaxation. Just around the corner in any city, he'll find beautiful parks with well-kept tennis courts to indulge in his favorite recreation. Here on a beautiful court, he can meet in friendly competition the kindred soul, willing to play with the spirit of sportsmanship prevailing. Forgotten is the grim reality of their daily grind. Forgotten in their joy of the spirited sport. For here on the courts, it's not the winning so much as the game that counts. A game that gladdens the hearts of the happy contestants. Free in the thought that they're achieving that mystical something. Happy, carefree leisure and complete relaxation. No matter which way the ball bounces. Oh, here at the beach, what more ideal spot is there for those who dare conquer the restless waves with a brisk, invigorating dip in the briny? Among the restless seekers of leisure, we find the surf riders, that lucky group devoted to wooing the spirit of relaxation. Here with complete abandon, safely astride the surfboard, they joyously ride the whistling waves. Meanwhile, for those who don't care for aquatic leisure, there's always the mountain, where one may find peace of mind and a genuine spot for relaxation. Here among the majestic peaks of the snow-covered mountains, amidst the winter grandeur of nature, one finds the skier. Dedicated to enjoying the winter sport of skiing, pronounced skiing. With a joyous Galantersprung, he's off. <laughs> And what finer accomplishment to the inveterate leisure lover than a fast spin down an icy slope, swiftly shushing past unseen obstacles. And he's into a series of high-speed Christianis, swooping gracefully downward. But as you may have noticed, Weekend athletics have a tendency to stove in the weekend athletes between weekends. To avoid this, well-known authorities on the subject of leisure and relaxation suggest some less strenuous hobby, like spectator sports, where you sit back and watch somebody else do the work. Now that's true relaxation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we are out at the Elite Deluxe Sports Palace about to witness one of the biggest ice hockey games of the season bringing together two of the top-ranking teams in the league. In no other game is the feeling of competition so keen, affecting both players and spectators alike, turning casual friends into bitter enemies. Oh, it's breathtaking, and they're mixing it up. Wow, a basket, a basket. Carries us, carries us. Oh, touche! And look at that body. And look, look down the sideline. It's a touchdown. Strike ball, ball, strike ball, strike. He's out. Out like a light. Here comes the pitch. The long road drive. Straight down the fairway. Is it a strike? Is it a strike? No, a spare. Well, that deuce. Well, that deuce. Well, that deuce. Rally! Rally! Wow! Wow, what a performance. What a show. It's every man for himself. And that's why ice hockey is called a spectator sport. And now we come to vacations, the biggest chunk of leisure time man has to spend. Let's look behind the scenes and study a typical vacation from beginning to end. 
For 50 long weeks, our hero has been planning how to spend his two glorious weeks of vacation. Shall it be fishing at Fond du Lac, sunrise in the Rockies, basking on the beach, dude ranching, golfing, boating, hunting in the North Woods? But wait, stop dreaming about it. Vacation time is here. Home slaves! Hmm, that's my car. Pull over to the side. And finally, the perfect haven for rest and relaxation. But all good things must come to an end. So, it's back once again to the old grind. Back to the good old workaday world. Refreshed in body and spirit. Yeah. Ready to join the teeming multitudes hurrying to their jobs. Oh boy, back to the familiar office where one is greeted by one's co workers. You're late, Chief. Get to work. Back in harness again, happily pitching in to make up for vacation's lost time. You're killing time, Chief. Get to work. But he's not killing time. Time is killing him. And as the days slip by, a secret urge grows within him, an urge to escape, to get away from it all, off to some far away tropic isle. Yes, deep within every man is this desire to escape, to shake off the tensions of modern day living. And so a sacrificial tribute must be offered by the simple, lovable, hospitable islanders. Geef knew the friendly natives wouldn't throw him to the volcano, but they did. Hello! Hey, Goofy. Goofy! Wake up! Huh? <laughs> You're gonna work all night? You're sleeping on your own time. Oh, gosh! This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service.